Is it time to talk about Sicario? Hmm. Considering all these lights, it would seem so. So let's talk about Sicario. Day of the Soldado. Roll it. I know who you are. You're the attorney whose family they killed. Not they. My father. So, Sicario 2, Day of the Soldado has finally hit theaters. It's the highly anticipated sequel to Sicario, which was directed by Denis Villeneuve and written by Taylor Sheridan. And Sicario 2 has a new director on board, whose name I will not even try to pronounce, and the same writer as the first one, Taylor Sheridan, again. And this one is far inferior to the first one. Very disappointingly so. I went into this movie not with high expectations, but with some expectations because of how great the first movie is. I really enjoy the first Sicario as a smart, well-constructed, well-directed, well-executed action movie. It's an incredibly well-produced action movie. And that's sort of why I went into this with expectations, because Taylor Sheridan is a decent writer. He wrote the first Sicario, which again, I liked. He wrote Hell or High Water, which made it onto my best of 2015 or 16 list. That's a great movie. And then he wrote Wind River, which I didn't particularly like, but I still had hopes for this one going in that he would uh, be coming back to this franchise and he would have some great story to tell. And he doesn't. The, the worst part of this movie is undoubtedly the script. Everything else, especially from a technical perspective, is pretty much on point. It's not nearly as good as Sicario 1 because Denis Villeneuve and Roger Deakins were the cinematographer and director respectively, and they're two of the best working people in their fields right now. Roger Deakins is arguably the best cinematographer of all time, and uh, Denis Villeneuve is one of the best up-and-coming directors that we have today. And these two combining together, making that first movie, it was gorgeous. Sicario 1 was gorgeous. And while I can't quite say that Sicario 2 is, I can say that Sicario 2 is still very well directed and it's still very well shot. And that's sort of the biggest redeeming factor of Sicario 2 is that it is, it looks great. It looks really great. Most of the shots are really nice to look at. They're very well composed. They're well, very well framed. They're very well blocked. Everything looks nice. And the sound design is great. There's some really hard hitting uh, sound effects in this movie with the uh, action sequences. The, the bullets have real weight to them and you can kind of feel them. And whenever they shoot, you're like, oh, oh. Rápido. it actually kind of feels real in a sense and the action scenes are great because of how good the sound design is and because of how good the cinematography and direction is the action scenes work really well the action scenes in this movie are really fun that well i don't know if i'd say fun they're pretty dark they're pretty gruesome but they're pretty intense they do exactly what they need to do they get in they get out they're super fast they're super brutal and they're really enjoyable to watch because they're so well constructed but that's it sicario 2 again its biggest problem is with its script and its story i would say um we have two characters from sicario 1 coming back Benicio del toro's character alejandro and josh brolin's character matt i believe matt something i don't remember his last name and these two were sort of the side characters in sicario 1 alejandro maybe a little bit less than josh brolin's character but these two were side characters. The main character of Sicario 1 was Emily Blunt, and she was this uh, very by-the-books, very detail-oriented, um, straight-arrow kind of person that was experiencing the movie as the audience was. She was saying what the audience was saying. She was feeling what the audience was feeling. She was the audience catalyst in Sicario 1. In your window down. Gun. Gun. Gun left. What are the rules here? We must be engaged to engage. Permission to get out of the vehicle and set a perimeter. 
That's sort of the biggest problem with the second one is that there isn't a character like that. Sicario 2 doesn't have any audience characters. There isn't anyone to experience the movie through. And for a screenplay to not have that, it kind of alienates the audience immediately because you can't really connect with anybody. You see Benicio Del Toro's character and Josh Brolin's character doing these horrific things that are really gruesome, really disturbing, and really vile, and you just can't connect with them because that's not what a normal human does, obviously. So you have these two characters that are really like seedy, weird, not very good people as the main characters, and uh, the audience can't connect with them. So right off the bat, you have this wall that's built in between the audience and the movie, and then the story is a confusing mess. It's so convoluted and overly complex to the point where a lot of scenes are really hard to follow or feel purposeless. You can understand how that will expand our ability to combat them. You want to see this thing through? I'm going to have to get dirty. Dirty is exactly why you're here. You're going to help us start a war. With who? Everyone. No rules this time. The movie starts off with these horrifying scenes where a guy suicide bombs near the U.S.-Mexico uh, border, and then a couple other guys suicide bomb in a grocery store and kill a ton of people. And then to counter this, um, the U.S. government hires Matt, played by Josh Brolin, to kidnap this African guy who steals cargo ships or oil tankers, and he interrogates him, and he finds out that this African guy was paid off to not uh, steal a specific oil tanker, which they said had the suicide bombers from the shopping mart on board. And so to combat the suicide bombers, they decide to start a war with the Mexican drug cartel. This is where I get completely lost because I do not understand why this would do anything. I don't get why the US government decided to try to start a war between two of the major drug cartels in Mexico, other than the fact that it was just Sicario 2, and that the first Sicario dealt with the drug cartel, so the second one does as well. But I didn't understand the setup of the movie, where we have a Mexican bomber, uh, suicide bomber blow himself up by the border and maybe it's to imply that the other suicide bombers are also from Mexico but I don't know again why they would go to war with the drug cartel over this because I mean some of the cartel members uh, smuggle people across the border but if somebody's gonna get across the border they're gonna do it anyway why would they why would starting a war with the two drug cartels stop people from crossing the border and blowing themselves up I didn't get that, and then there's this shot of like these prayer rugs after the one guy bombs himself by the Mexican border, and they're like, these are prayer rugs, something's going down, and that never comes up again. I was really expecting some kind of like commentary with the like Allah Akbar kind of thing, but there isn't. I, I felt like the movie was trying to uh, explore the line between uh, political uh, interference in things and terrorism, but I don't think the movie does a very good job of exploring that topic because it just feels like Sicario 1, but more complicated for no reason. Because the first Sicario is very straightforward. It's just an action movie with some smart uh, elements woven into it, with some themes, some commentary, and this one seems to want to uh, thread this commentary into the movie's narrative, but it can't ever quite get there. And as the movie went along, I kind of just got more and more confused because I didn't know what the point of anything was. Because the they go to start this war on the cartel by kidnapping a girl, and they kidnap this girl from one of the cartel and then blame it on the other cartel. And they're saying that if you mess with us, this is what happens. But then they try to take the girl to some like police station so that the one of the cartel they stole her from will come to get her but then they get cut off by the federal police who start attacking them. And then apparently, even though it was in the middle of nowhere, 
Somebody saw or witnessed or filmed the incident with the federal police and it painted these American soldiers that killed all these police that attacked them as bad guys? So they got shut down, they couldn't continue with the mission, but the girl escaped and Benicio Del Toro went after her. And then he tried to get her across the border only to get shot in the jaw. And then she gets picked up by this kind of cartel, this smaller cartel. And then the Americans come in and kill everyone except the girl and take her into witness protection. And then Benicio Del Toro uh, crawls out of the desert and then finds the kid that shot him in the jaw and says, let's talk about your future and the movie ends. And I don't know what any of it was supposed to be. I don't know what the point of any of it was. It felt like it was just constantly going around in circles with itself. It felt like it wanted to be a straightforward action movie, but the plot kept kind of getting in the way, where it just made things so overly convoluted and confusing for no reason. So, in the end, I can't say that I particularly like this movie. I think that it's very middle of the road. Like I said, a lot of the technical aspects of this movie are pretty great. The cinematography, the direction, some of the action sequences are pretty fun. The, I don't know if I'd say fun again, but I keep saying it, so I'm just gonna go with it. The sound design is really great, and the performances from the entire cast are really great. It's just that the plot, the story, the storytelling, and the thematics of the movie don't quite add up to anything. It kind of feels like it's just spinning around in circles to no end. And when it does end, it's very anticlimactic and underwhelming. Good luck. Luck doesn't live on this side of the border. So I'd probably give this one a five. Very, I was very disappointed, very let down by this movie. I was, again, I had expectations for it. I was moderately to mildly excited for it because of Taylor Sheridan and because I liked the first one so much, but this is just, it's so disappointing. Really too bad. So, yeah. Oh, look at that. <laughs>